Good evening, I'm Prasad and this is Kidi News. Lim Kit Siang is calling for a unity government with pass, but only if the party's leader stops being so hostile towards Anwar Ibrahim and becomes an honest, responsible and respected Islamic leader. No biggie, right? DAP veteran Lim Kit Siang has suggested that the unity government extend a hand of cooperation to pass. However, Lim stressed that the government should only do so on two conditions. First, he said past President Abdul Hadi Awang should cease hostilities towards Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Second was that Hadi should start to be an honest, responsible and respected Islamic leader. Lim had made the call in support of the Yang Dipertuan Agong's decree that Malaysia needs political stability and on the success of the Unity Government Convention yesterday. In view of this, he said he did not see why PAS cannot be invited to join the Unity Government. However, he said this is if Hadi can become an honest, responsible and respected Islamic leader in Malaysia and admit he made unsubstantiated allegations against the DAP and promised not to repeat it. Among others, Lim said Hadi had made several wild allegations including one that non-Muslims were plunderers who indulged in bribery and deceit at the expense of the Malays. He also cited Hadi's allegation that the DAP recruited ignorant Malays to serve as the party's puppets. Lim said the Yang Dipertuan Agong is right, that Malaysia needs political stability to become a progressive, prosperous and respected world-class nation. He questioned if Hadi will heed calls to prioritize national interests instead of acting for his own personal interests. Past committee member Nick Muhammad Abdul Nick Abdul Aziz met with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim last week and wants everyone to know that it was just an ordinary affair, nothing political at all. So there you have it, folks, a totally ordinary non-political meeting between two important figures arranged by a preacher with a side of family drama. Politics. Nick Muhammad Abdul Nick Abdul Aziz has stressed that there was nothing political about his meeting with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim last week. Utusan Malaysia quoted the past Central Leadership Committee member as saying that the meeting was an ordinary affair. Nick Abdul said he met Anwar in Parliament often when he was an MP, but hardly got a chance to since Anwar became Prime Minister. He added that he felt lucky to meet Anwar as Prime Minister, had congratulated him and prayed he can carry out his duties well as Prime Minister. On Saturday, PKR-linked preacher Wan Ji Wan Hussein had told Malaysia Kini that he was requested by PKR Vice President Nurul Iza Anwar to act as the middle person and arrange a meeting between Nick Abduh and Anwar. Wan Ji said he had met with Nick Abduh a day before the start of Ramadan, but the meeting with Anwar only happened on the sidelines of the Madani Hari Raya open house in Kota Baru on Friday. He added that he had suggested that Nick Omar also be invited to the meeting. Meanwhile, Nick Abduh said it was only a coincidence that his older brother, Nick Omar, was also present during the meeting. Nick Abdul's relationship with Nick Omar was said to be strained when the latter decided to join Amanah. Nick Omar had disagreed with the decision by PAS to work together with AMNO in 2018. Anwar Musa reminisces about the good old days when thousands of AMNO and PAS supporters fired up the Rakyat spirit at the World Trade Center in September 2019. But alas, those days may be long gone, as Anwar predicts AMNO's rejection by the Rakyat in the upcoming elections. Former AMNO member Anwar Musa predicted that millions of people, including AMNO members, will leave the party. In a post on Facebook, he said this is due to the presence of socialists, liberals and DAP at the World Trade Center Kuala Lumpur for the Unity Government Convention yesterday. According to Anwar, the presence of thousands of AMNO and PAS supporters at the Putra World Trade Center in September 2019 fired up the rakyat spirit, so much so that AMNO won a series of state elections with flying colors. However, he said the party is set to be rejected by the rakyat in the upcoming state elections and the next general election. 
Anwar was commenting on the presence of DAP leaders for the convention at WTCKL, which houses the AMNO headquarters. For years, AMNO's headquarters at WTCKL was hostile territory for DAP, a party that the former often painted as the enemies of Malays and Islam. It was unthinkable then that any DAP leader would be able to set foot in the area, let alone address AMNO members from the stage. DAP Secretary General Anthony Loke, who took the stage yesterday, had even admitted that he was nervous to give a speech there. Anwar, who is a former Ketere MP, was expelled from AMNO last December. Earlier this month, past Secretary General Takiyuddin Hassan said that Anwar has expressed interest in joining PAS. Zayed Ibrahim believes that PAS and Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim should work together. So let's see if PAS is up for some teamwork. Former Minister Zaid Ibrahim believes PAS should work together with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. He said this in response to Anwar expressing his desire to fix, among others, Kelantan's decades-old water problem, which the Premier said requires full cooperation from the state government. Zaid said he welcomed Anwar's remarks and said that this was the way to lead and gain support instead of lodging police reports or arguing. He said when the Prime Minister invites you to work together to solve a problem, PAS has to be agreeable and in Parliament show support for the Prime Minister. Zaid stressed that Anwar was a concerned leader who cared about the plight of Kelantan folk, despite knowing that they might still vote for PAS no matter the help extended. He added that PAS should also change its politicking style by forgetting and forgiving past grudges for the sake of Kelantan's stability and its people's welfare. Kalau kita nak kerajaan stable lama, kita perlulah memberi sokongan kepada Perdana Menteri sekarang ini supaya dia dapat teruskan program dia tu. Kalau dia tak buat apa-apa, kalau dia gagal, okeylah. Pilihan raya akan datang, kita tukarlah. Tapi buat masa ini, dia yang jadi Perdana Menteri, PAS kena sokong dia lah. Kalau tidak, sia-sialah dia sokong. Nak membangunkan, habiskan duit di Kelantan ke, di Ganu ke, di kawasan-kawasan Kedah ke. Lo Siohong has filed an appeal to nullify the unilateral conversion of her three children to Islam. This is after the High Court in Kuala Lumpur denied her legal challenge over the religious status of her twin daughters as well as son, who are under her custody courtesy of an earlier family court order. Previously, the court had ruled that the children had been validly converted to Islam in accordance with Perlis Islamic State law. Who says hard work doesn't pay off? If you're wondering why the MACC Chief Commissioner and Attorney General's contracts were extended, the Prime Minister says it's due to their satisfactory performance. The decision to extend the service of Azam Baki as the MACC Chief Commissioner was due to his satisfactory performance. This is according to Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. He added that Attorney General Idris Harun's contract was also extended for the same reason. He said this is especially after the MACC and Attorney General were given more freedom to operate. At a press conference in Putrajaya today, Anwar said even though there were issues raised at first, he saw that after giving the MACC and Attorney General more leeway to carry out their duties, they have been doing so satisfactorily. He added that with this leeway, action had been taken without fear or favor, leading to a minister's office being searched and action being taken against officers. He said this when asked why Azam's contract was extended. Azam had reached his mandatory retirement age last Friday. On May 10th, Chief Secretary of the Government Muhammad Zuki Ali had announced his reappointment as MACC Chief for another year effective May 12th. Earlier in March, Idrus, who was also appointed by former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin, also had his contract extended by six months. BN and Pakatan Harapan will be using their respective logos in the upcoming state election. This is according to Kedah AMNO Chief Matzir Khalid. However, he said this was only decided by the state chapters of both parties, but the party headquarters have yet to provide any feedback. Similarly, Selangor will unlikely see BN and Harapan sharing a logo as well. 
Before we go, let's take a look at more headlines from today. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. Now, Prasad, thank you for watching.